Welcome, my name is Gabby Coletta, and we'll be moving through a restorative yin practice with the assistance of a wall. So if you're in the center of a room, go ahead and make your way over to a wall, place your mat, short edge against the wall. Part of the invitation for practice today is an ode and an honoring of our boundaries. In yoga and Ayurveda, Boundaries can be seen as an expression of earth element. An earth element is this force, this structure, this scaffolding that um, really supports us as we move through our life. So it enables us to use our energy wisely and to contain it in a way in which we can be more resilient uh, to whatever life throws at us, be it physical, emotional imbalances, spiritual imbalances. And so how we'll explore that in practice today is using support, earth element, and the boundaries of bricks and the wall and different props to notice how these boundaries can actually enable a depth of opening. And like that happens in the physical body, we can also do that in our psychic and mental and energetic bodies. When we practice boundaries in our relationships, it creates a container in which we feel safe. When we feel safe, we actually open ourselves up to greater intimacy and connection and depth of presence. So um, psychologist Nedra Tawab, she describes boundaries as this um, practice that will set you free very much how yoga is a practice of liberation, liberation from suffering, or however you choose to define that for yourself. So go ahead and find your comfortable seat, and I invite you to lean into boundaries as a way of loving yourself. Mm. As you settle into your seat, easy sukhasana, easy cross-legged seat, or if something else feels more supportive, please access that. Let's place our palms face down on the lap for a little more energetic grounding. And if you want, you can close the eyes. If that feels inaccessible, just soften the gaze towards the earth, the ground. As a way of collecting your presence, take the biggest breath you've taken all day. Really inhale, fill up. And exhale, let everything go. Two more arrival breaths. Inhale, just drawing in your presence here and now. And as you exhale, let the bones get heavy, the muscles soften, and the sits bones really ground into the earth. And this third big cleansing breath, feel the spine get a little longer, space between each vertebrae as you inhale. And keep that length as you exhale everything out. And gently drop your right ear to the right shoulder. Perhaps noticing sensation, the left side of the neck. Use your breath with curiosity to explore how the body feels here. Big inhale, stretching the breath across the left side of the neck. And exhale. Release your chin towards your chest and roll your head over to the opposite side. Pause here, just refining our attention and awareness as we begin to drop into practice. And inhale, let the breath really expand presence in the right side of the neck, anywhere else the body's calling. Big exhale to let the left ear fall deeper towards the left shoulder. You can stay holding this neck stretch side to side or just gently move, nodding the chin, I'm just feeling into these muscles around the neck. And bring your head to center. And keep the eyes closed or you can open the eyes letting the gaze be soft. Imagine this rooting down through your sits bones, 
Then send your fingertips into the earth on either side. Press them down, lift the heart. Inhale to reach the arms overhead, just accessing this expansion through the upper body. Hands to heart center. And then do that twice more. Inhale, reach up, grow tall. Exhale, hands to heart center. Once more from the steadiness of the sit bones, lift the arms up, ribs telescoping away from the hips. And exhale, hands to heart center. Find your bolster, replace it along your mat. Now take a brick and place it near the top of the head. And we'll begin our practice in a supported heart opener. Send the legs long. Take the bolster and place it just behind the heart. It comes out from underneath the armpits. Palms to the sky. And then the brick serves as support for the head. Be on the taller setting or a lower setting. Find what feels suitable for your body. Once you arrive, let the bones rest. Let the body settle. Perhaps you start to notice that as you give your body to gravity, you surrender to its own heaviness. You can let the body know and trust that it is health the support of the earth is holding it. So much of our everyday is conditioned to do, to move. So can you trust that for the remainder of this practice you've carved out time to just be, to receive, As you settle in this heart opener, start to deepen your breath. Draw the breath in through the nose, really filling the body, the belly, in all directions. And a slow exhale through the nose, emptying. Continue to deepen the breath slowly, stretching it, elongating it, almost like you're drinking in air. And let the breath go. Send your awareness, your mind's eye, to the heart, the center of your heart. So when we cultivate healthy boundaries, we're able to better manage our energy, to protect ourselves and safeguard ourselves from overwhelm, from overextending, resentment, for burnout, and so many more benefits. One of the best ways to access a boundary is the word no. So as we move through this practice and begin to hold poses for longer, if there's at any point where there's too much, honor your no. Feel free to take yourself out of that pose sooner. And if there's an intention around a personal boundary you want to set, go ahead and set that now.
Take one more breath here. Slowly roll over to one side and mindfully press yourself up. Rock on to all fours. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up. Take the feet really wide and a deep bend in the knees and then let your torso just drape down. You can let your hands rest on the earth, maybe the palms face up, but let the back of the neck get long. Feel the four corners of the feet ground. And slowly begin to roll yourself up. Notice how pressing into the ground invites this unraveling. This rooting down allows for the rise and the lift of the heart. Roll the shoulders down the back, turn the palms forward. Slowly make your way to the wall. I invite you as you move to be mindful about each step you take. You can move your props to the side. When you get to the wall, you're going to bring your left arm out to a half T. Left hip to the wall and slowly start to turn your heart towards the front of your mat. Find your depth. Deeper opening in the shoulder of the heart means more turning the heart towards the front. If it's too much, then you can slowly rotate your belly towards the wall. And so we use the structure of the wall, arms stretched against the wall to open across the chest. Let the shoulders relax as you do this. Take deep breaths here. If it helps, you can take your right fingertips to the wall and just lightly press into the wall to turn the heart open. Take one more breath here. Slowly start to turn your torso towards the wall. We'll switch sides. Send your right hand out to the side, palm on the wall. The right hip to the wall as you start to roll your heart towards the front of your mat. Again, you can use your fingertips, left fingertips to press into the wall and help deepen the rotation and opening in your right shoulder. Begin to practice discernment with your awareness as to where your threshold is, as to what is too much. So if you need to titrate, not open up as far on your back. It's also a really incredible pose if you spend a lot of time at a computer doing desk work or driving you're a rock climber like me. Continue to breathe across the chest. Open here. Take one more big breath. And slowly come back to center. Move to our first side. This time we're bringing your arm to 90 degree bend. You'll get a different area and you might not be able to open up as far. So honor that. We'll start with the belly against the wall. 
and begin to slowly turn our feet away from the wall, turning the hips away from the wall, and finding your depth. Can you still stay in tune with the breath, breath pulsing through the whole body? Every inhale is an invitation for opening, for expansion. Every exhale is an invitation to soften any excess holding patterns in the body. Take one more big breath here. On your exhale, slowly turn towards the wall and we'll switch sides, 90 degree bend, like a goal post with your right palm on the wall and slowly start to turn your heart towards the side, the long edge of the mat towards the front. Maybe you start to notice any difference between each side. And see if you can stay in the place of curiosity. Whatever you notice in the body, sensations, or whatever feelings emerge. Rather than trying to make sense, can you stay in curiosity of what is happening? Where are you from? One more breath here. Slowly turn back towards the wall. If you need to, you can wiggle the shoulders a little bit, just getting some lubrication, some opening there. We're gonna move into down dog at the wall. So you'll step a few feet back. If you wanna get really precise, you can sit your booty at the wall and measure how long your leg is. Um, but you'll be able to adjust standing up. Take your feet a little wider than your hips, hips width for this one. Walk your hands over to the wall. And then you're going to start to walk your hands down and you might have to walk your feet back. You're eventually making a giant L with the body. Melt your heart towards the earth. Be mindful not to lock out the knees, but keep a little bend. Let your heart melt towards the ground, but keep a little lift under the armpits. Knit the low ribs in. And just begin to notice how it feels, using the wall as a support. In a pose that you might visit frequently, down dog and other practices. Notice how it feels with the support of the wall. So part of cultivating healthy boundaries is learning when to push back, when to exercise our no. And so as you breathe here, maybe you also scan where in your life no would be beneficial. For me, I find that I'm constantly challenged by negotiating with what is enough. So my no is no, I don't need to do more. Continue to breathe here. Maybe you feel the breath, the side body lengthening on each inhale. And each exhale pressing into the wall with your hands, the floor with your feet. Take one more breath here. Slowly walk the feet towards the wall, walk the hands up the wall and release. Locate your blanket or something that can slide on the floor. Okay. 
slowly make your way down. You're gonna place your right knee on the blanket a few inches away from the wall and start to scooch the blanket towards the wall. Now, this could be enough, or you might place your left foot down, a little 90 degree bend here, and walk your hands up to the knee, pressing into the knee, lifting the heart. So we're aiming for this quad stretch, maybe a little hip flexor stretch too. Now, if you want more intensity, you'll keep walking your back body towards the wall. You wanna make sure the knee is pretty close to the wall. So you might have to adjust a little bit, just really scooch your knee on the blanket towards the wall. Maybe this is where you stay. If you're against the wall, only if you're against the wall, you might play with sending the arms up. Notice if there's a big sway in the back, if so, lengthen the tailbone down. This can get very intense, so just honor if you need to lean forward a little bit, releasing it. Okay. You can also release it a bit by scooching the knee away from the wall. Notice where you feel sensation. We won't be here too long. So settle into your full presence of what you're feeling, what's emerging, and can we be with it. Take one more breath. Slowly come down. Hands to the earth, scooching the knee away. Ground your left knee down, and then take your right foot down. Start to scooch your knee towards the wall. You can wiggle your right foot towards you too. Helps to have that 90 degree bend in the right leg. And again, maybe it's enough to just stay down here. Maybe you're already feeling things. You can use bricks. You can walk the hands up to the thigh. As you do so, eventually you'll work your back body towards the wall. Notice if the right hip wants to hike up and see if you can keep leveling your hips off. Lengthen the tailbone down. Lift the heart. Knit your ribs in like you did in down dog. And then wherever you feel the most intensity, send your presence, your awareness there, your breath, and a little compassion, a little love. Take one more breath here. And slowly release. Switch your left knee away from the wall. And then make your way over to the wall. We're gonna meet in legs up the wall. I find that it helps to glue one hip to the wall. And then just lean back to swing your legs up. As you arrive, let the arms come to rest either on the other side or out to a T. Plant the left sole of the foot onto the wall and take the right ankle 
Big a few ankle circles here. And eventually cross the right ankle just above the left knee. If you need to adjust, you can lift the hips up to help access that and then settle the hips back down. If this feels like too much, you can straighten your left leg. If you want more, you can take a deeper bend into the left leg and work the left heel down towards the groin. Figure four at the wall. And we settle into this hip opener, the gentle ushering of the right knee towards the wall. Lengthen your tailbone towards the wall. And close the eyes or soften the gaze. Invite yourself to settle in. Take a big breath and let the exhale soften the muscles, the resistance. When we work with our deep hip opening poses, they also access Muladhara Chakra, the root chakra. And the root chakra is this energy center where the earth element resides. So by accessing these deep hip openers, we start to enhance the ability of our root chakra to provide stability, support, security, nourishment. That can be physically for our bodies, but that can also be emotional and mental resilience. One more deep breath. Full exhale. Straighten the leg and the long straight foot against the wall and then send the right leg high. If you need to bend and extend it, please do. And then switch sides. Flex the left foot, rest the left ankle just above the right knee. You can stay here, or you can start to walk the right sole of the foot down the wall. And eventually, finding your depth of intensity, finding your threshold of what feels like a healthy boundary without pushing it or overextending it. See if you can sense into the subtlety of this pose. Notice what slight adjustments might conjure, might bring your awareness to sense. Tilt the tailbone towards the wall. Press your left knee towards the wall. Let the shoulders, the back body melt into the ground. The jaw soften, the tongue relax, even the space between the brows that soften and widen.
and you thread the breath slowly through the whole body, sending the breath to anywhere that hasn't felt it yet. One more breath here. Slowest exhale yet. Slowly extend the right leg towards the sky. Then the left leg will meet it. Notice if your booty has scooched away from the wall, and if it has, just wiggle yourself a little closer. Bring the soles of the feet together, butterfly the knees out. Option to be in Baddha Pranasana at the wall, or if you prefer a straddle, then you can send the legs long to either side. Notice how the back of the heart rests on the ground, a solid, stable earth. And see if you can invite greater ease into the shoulders. Let your body surrender to gravity, maybe inviting the straddle a little wider or the heels a little closer towards the ground. So we use boundaries to safeguard our well-being. And in that same way, we can use the metaphor of the wall to support our body in these poses. So we don't have to do more than what's needed. We don't have to overwork, overexert, overdo. Let the support of the wall be what enables us to take care of ourselves, accepting support from elsewhere. Take three more breaths here. Let them be slow, full, intentional breaths. Cleansing exhales. If you're in a straddle, you'll draw your legs up to center. If you're in in butterfly, Bhattakonasana, draw the knees in and extend the legs to center. We will end in legs up the wall. There's a few variations you can take. You can let the sacrum rest on the earth, or you can slide a blanket or a bolster underneath the sacrum. If you have weight, or if you have a sandbag, one way of inviting extra grounding is to place the sandbag on the feet. When you're settled into your Shavasana legs of the wall, I invite you to just feel into the earth element beneath you, holding you. The wall holding you. 
wherever you are, take the biggest breath in. And exhale, let everything go. Let yourself be held in Shavasana.